Greetings! In this video, we will create a basic UV map for our head, um, unfold that map. We can either export that and open it in a third-party application like Photoshop, or we can paint directly on the mesh here in Maya. Let's get started. First, we want to generate a map. So we will select our object, and the character is facing in the positive Z direction. So one way to just generate a quick map is to planar project. So in the modeling mode, we'll come to UV planar. We'll open the dialog box, UV planar dialog box, and we'll make sure that Z axis is selected. If you've modeled facing another direction, uh, you'll need to select that uh, particular axis. We'll hit project, and that just pro projects a flat map. We can open our UV editor here. We can come to UV, UV editor here, or click here. And here it is, it's just projected straight through. So what we need to do is lay it out flat. We can use the unfold tool, but we'll first need to make a cut along an edge. So imagine we have this uh, solid object and we'd like to lay it down flat we can cut along an edge and then the computer will know that's where the unfold should take place. And uh, typically your character uh, from the hairline to the back of the neck is where a cut takes place. We've modeled this character with the hat on. So if your character doesn't have a hat, you can start right at the hairline, right about here, and select an edge that goes all the way back to the neck. We'll do that at the top. So we're going to Pick the center edge, make sure you're centered. If you wanted to look at that in the orthographic view, that wouldn't be a bad idea. So we see that edge there. And we'll come around to the back and we'll just double click. And that will um, select that edge, right? So we pick this component, an edge. Shift selected, uh, shift double clicked this edge here, this component. And it selected that edge all the way around. Now we're not cutting the model, we're cutting the UV. Uh, again, we're, we've selected this edge on the model, but we're gonna cut it along the UV edge. So once again, I'll open my UV editor, and let me just close these so we're starting from scratch. You can come down to Cut and Sew and hit Cut. There's also the menu here, Cut, Sew, Cut. Now, when we hit Cut, it doesn't appear as though anything has happened. Um, we need the uh, additional step of unfolding. So we'll select it as a shell, right clicking, choosing UV shell, make sure that it's selected, and then we can come to unfold. Unfold is here, and modify unfold is the menu uh, path. But we'll just hit unfold here, and you can see that it cut along that edge. So that edge that we created there, right, we, we selected here, double clicked here, it, it selected that edge that we cut it, and then when it unfolded, that's where it unfolded. Now we'll want to straighten this up. We want to make sure that it's in the zero one UV space, right? So this little piece is sticking out. We'll just use our regular scale tool we just want it to fit uh, in there and we'll straighten it up. Now, if you're painting in a, another application, you'll need to export this map. When you're exporting, um, one caveat is that the object, the mesh has to be selected as a mesh in order for the export to work. And so we'll come to image UV snapshot, image UV snapshot, you can determine the size, right? This will export as a square. Um, just depending on how large you're working, how, long, how large resolution. Um, JPEG is usually a good bet. And you can hit Browse and save that wherever you'd like. You'll open it up in Photoshop, for instance, and you'll want to create layers. You won't want to paint directly on the UV map. You can, in fact, put the UV map as a multiplied layer and always have that as your top layer. Create layers below and paint on those layers. Then when you're done, you would 
come back to Maya, we would assign a material, let's say assign new material Lambert, and then just in the color channel, right, we come to color, file, and then you could go and find that uh, image that you have saved. I'm going to come back and just break that because I'm going to paint here in Maya. Okay, I'll turn off my wireframe. And let's review painting uh, in Maya using the paint effects. So I have my objects selected. We'll come into the rendering mode, up to texturing, and we'll select our 3D paint tool. Now, if you lose your 3D paint tool, if you click off and then you want to get back, this is the same procedure. So have your objects selected. Texturing, 3D paint tool, we'll open that dialog box. And the first time through, we have to assign the texture. So just now we went to the color channel and we went to find a file to plug into the color texture. Likewise here, it's going to create a, an external file. And so we need to click that, assign, edit textures. 2000 square will be fine. Uh, and we'll do it as a JPEG. That way, as a JPEG, we can paint and you can even sketch out and we can kind of go back and forth between the two. We could maybe lay out some things with the tools and paint effects that we like, then open that image in Photoshop, and maybe you want to do some fine tune painting uh, in Photoshop. So it doesn't have to be one or the other. You can, you can do both techniques. So I'll hit Assign, and now I'm ready to paint. Uh, I can come up to my Paint Effects tool, and right, we're painting this kind of jack-in-the-box clown face we could start with flesh. Now this has a shadow and highlight, but we can just get some color down. So we could just lay some of that, and where you let up is where you'll get a little bit of, of shadow, and you can use that to your advantage. Now if, right, if you wanna just come back over that, get that on the cheekbone, you can do that. And uh, I'm going to paint white over this, so I'm not too terribly concerned. We just I'm going to create the appearance that this is actually uh, some flesh color, and we're going to yeah, and uh, oops, and undo. Uh, remember, we have to hit the Z key three times to undo. Um, a little bit funny in the paint effects. But just remember when you want to undo, it's three times. And uh, I'm not going to do this perfectly, just, just uh, reminding you. And in fact, let's say we clicked off. You're working, <clears throat> excuse me, and you clicked off and you say, oh, I want to start painting again. It's just that same procedure. You don't have to assign the texture, but we'll select here, make sure you're in the rendering mode, texturing 3D paint tool, uh, open the dialog box. We can click the paint effects icon here, and uh, now we're back in business. Oils gives us a real painterly look. And so uh, the oil white, we can imagine that this was kind of the uh, paint of clown makeup. And I'm not holding it down I'm just trying to get that uh, over and maybe some you know areas where the shadow is not to your liking but it just gives us that look of some costume paint uh, on our character and we could maybe even leave uh, some of that flesh uh, out there right where it hits the hat etc now if you're painting right painting the hat you could come up and these oils give a real nice real nice effect. Now the other, uh, the oil black, if we wanted to kind of paint in these black, uh, cavities, um, give it some eyeliner, right, if we wanted to come out here and paint a little bit. I'm doing this kind of quickly. You can get in there, oh the B key, right, of course, is changing the brush size. Um, I didn't push up nostrils on this model, I just realized. Probably want to push push up some nostrils in there. 
And then of course you can paint the clown design. So if I hold the B key, I'm just going to make this even smaller, right? And we could give it these classic clown markings. And then we can paint these in with the all the colors. You don't have to use only oils. You can use any of these that you like. Uh, it's up to you. But I, I really do like the look of the oil here. I can get in there nice and tight and, and clean that up. Maybe we grab some green. Right. And then if you have, you know, if you want to make something sharp, you can come in here real tight with a small brush. Right. And that kind of went into our flesh color, so I'm going to undo that. Maybe it would be the other way where you get in there with some green. Um, yeah, and then if we come up to airbrush, we've got some shadow, and here is shadow and then whiten. And this is good for creating right under the nose would kind of be dark, under the chin, the jawline would be a little bit darker. The area under the lip, oops, now, sometimes if your brush tool isn't scaling correctly, you can just come up right to the brush and manually change it here. So if you get it too big or too small, and for some reason the B key and the left mouse, uh, right, the scrubbing, because that's going very quick, for some reason on that particular tool, you can come up to scale here. Right, and we want some kind of shadow under that. Uh, you could shadow the cheekbone. Right. Shadow the area where the, the hat comes in. And then, of course, you've got the whiten. And the bridge of the nose, right, is typically highlighted. The a little bit hard to see on the screen. You can see when I go across that color, and I'm not sure I wanted to do that. But you can add highlight and shadow here in the airbrush. So highlight and shadow. Uh, I was using oils for most of my colors. I used flesh to lay down some initial color. And um, yeah, just a quick reminder, if you click off and you say, ah, oh, I want to get back, Pick the object, come up to Texturing 3D Paint Tool. Let's even imagine that was closed. You can come here, click on that, and you have access to all of these uh, paint. You can find this file. Again, if you wanted to open this, let's say, let's say you outlined everything and you were having a difficulty kind of painting. You wanted to open that in Photoshop. Um, we can come all the way out to our shader come to color and uh, oh I've forgotten to save it now this is actually good that I went here it's not actually saved yet we want if we want to be able to open it we want to hit save texture and there it gives us a path right and you could just follow that path go into Photoshop uh, follow this path open that up I've got face shape color JPEG and you can paint directly on that and then when you're ready save that from Photoshop, come back here, right, if we if we clicked off, I would come to Material Attributes, come to the Color Channel, click on the folder, and then relocate that, that saved file. If you saved from Photoshop right over the top, then it would automatically be there. I don't know if you'd, you'd want to do that, but uh, you're just reloading that. Of course, if you save over the top from Photoshop, it'll automatically, uh, it will automatically reload. So give that a shot, um, and uh, we'll take a look at your paint uh, on your model and uh, questions in the discussion forum. Have a good one.